be better to pick that up then. Um, so what, would you be switched on for that? Or? Yeah, I'm ready to turn that when you announce the hymn. So, the first hymn. off of the hymn? Yeah. Oh, so I've got no point in doing the gong then. Well, if you want to, it doesn't matter. Yeah. But I'll just like, when, when you announce yeah, the hymn. I wasn't, hymn, sure, yeah, I wasn't sure what you were actually yeah. playing. Yeah, that's going to be the, when you say, well, it's now sing the first hymn, I can flip to that slide. Is that what you do? Uh, well, I'm going to... Uh,
the Lord be with you. Um, a warm welcome to this Eucharist at St Dunstan's this morning and uh, under, under difficult circumstances and we hope that those of you who are, are watching from home feel very much gathered into this service today. We're going to uh, shorten slightly some of the longer hymns this morning just to make it easier for you at home. Uh, so we sing the first hymn, we praise you, we worship you, our God, uh, the first two and the last two verses. people of the Kulin Nation and pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Jesus said, this is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it, you shall love your neighbour as yourself. Let us therefore bring our sins before the one true God in penitence and faith. Merciful God, our maker and our judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth.
that we may see in you the fulfilment of all our need and may turn from every false satisfaction to feed on the true and living bread that you have given us in Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God now and forever. Amen. reading from the Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Now this I affirm and insist on in the Lord. You must no longer live as the Gentiles live in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of their ignorance and hardness of heart. They have lost all sensitivity and have abandoned themselves to licentiousness greedy to practice every kind of impurity. That is not the way you learn Christ, for surely you have heard about him and were taught in him as truth is in Jesus. You were taught to put away your former way of life, your old self, corrupt and deluded by its lusts, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to clothe yourselves with the new self, created according to the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. So then, putting away falsehood, let us all speak the truth to our neighbours, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but, but, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labour and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you are marked with, with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 130. Out of the depths have I called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. O let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, should note what we do wrong, who then, O Lord, could stand? I pray his forgiveness be to you, so that you shall be here. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits for him, and in his word is my hope. My soul looks for the Lord, more than watchman for the morning, more I say than watchman for the morning. O Israel, trust in the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is ample redemption.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said to the crowd, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. And then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And they were saying, is not this Jesus the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? And Jesus answered them, do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It's written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. And very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Before I preach, um, rather than include it in the sermon as such, uh, our gospel readings have been overlapping in recent weeks and um, we concluded last week's gospel with Jesus saying, I am the bread of life and the compilers of the lectionary have included that verse again as the start of today's gospel but I thought I might pass on the fact that and it, this is a complete sideline after preaching last Sunday on Jesus, the bread of life, uh, I went home to discover that our boxer dog, Harry, had eaten a whole loaf of bread, which we had inadvertently left on the kitchen bench. And uh, people wonder whether God has a sense of humour. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's Gospel... I think calls for a short reflection on what we might mean and what that might mean for us as recipients of the sacrament of Holy Communion. And uh, there's a very real sense when we're streaming services now that we're not actually recipients as such. I thought we might think about uh, aspects of that just a little. Attitudes have changed as to the nature of the consecrated elements of bread and wine in the Eucharist over the years and uh, about what we should believe about them. As for transubstantiation, uh, which some seem to think is still the underlying belief of the Roman Catholic Church, I'm safe in saying that the, the Roman Church doesn't teach that anymore. But as a place for us to start, let's go back only as far as the 13th century only as far as. People at that time received Holy Communion very rarely. Uh, and for instance, uh, St Francis of Assisi, who was a deacon but not an ordained priest, received Holy Communion often, we are told, uh, that's according to the records of the time, but often meant about seven times a year. And St Clair, who led a parallel life of devotion to St Francis and was also, as I'm sure you know, devoted to the Eucharist, received the sacrament no more frequently than every two months or so. So actually, receiving communion was by no means a daily or a weekly event in those times. And um, as I say, 
COVID-19 seems to have put us back into that uh, sort of picture somewhat, at least to a degree. Gradually, a practice developed of looking at the sacred host as, as a means of devotion uh, rather than receiving it. So again, we're sort of back in this position today, uh, even if electronically. So after the consecration prayer, the priest held up the host for what was called the gaze that saves us. And the popularity of exposing the sacrament in a suitable showing vessel, as it was called, a, a monstrance, uh, grew. And eventually there developed the custom of carrying the consecrated host in public procession as a form of reverence to Christ present in the Eucharist. And we've all seen that, uh, at maybe uh, when in our travels overseas, or certainly we've seen it uh, on, uh, on television. So this tradition is still observed in many parts of the world, and in a few Australian churches, not many, the service of benediction, which was the liturgical result of this practice, is still practised occasionally. These days, frequent reception of the sacrament is normal for many churches and individuals. But we need to be careful that our weekly familiarity and devotion doesn't dull our sense of wonder at Jesus God present in the Eucharist. The service of benediction was described by many as a meaningless and a possibly idolatrous ritual and yet at its heart it was about reference, reverencing with ritual and dignity that which runs the risk of being received in a routine or a nonchalant manner. Really it was simply emphasising the spiritual exercise of praying in the presence of the consecrated elements of bread and wine. It was not about worshipping them at all. It was about using them to focus the mind in a quite dramatic way upon the mystery of God. And we know, of course, that God cannot be captured, confined or summed up in such ways. And focusing on Christ um, in the elements of bread and wine is certainly not implying that we are able to reduce the wonder of God to something that is physically small either. What we contemplate in the Eucharist is God's presence by the use of a physical and a spiritual focal point. And that is not only about bread and wine, but about the very beautiful symbol of the chalice, for example, surrounded by the words of institution contained within the consecration prayer. Such physical objects and verbal expressions are meant to be aids of worship, but of course they offer different things to different people. But to return to the presence of God in the sacrament and what we think about that, may I suggest that we consider this, and this is just of course one, one way of, uh, of trying to, to access uh, the meaning and the, the spirit of the sacrament. When we sit at a meal table and we eat our meal at home or wherever that food is digested and metabolised if you like and it becomes us and we are all familiar with the saying you are what you eat however it's really the reverse for the food of the Eucharist we are changed into it when we eat it it is not changed into us. And by that I mean that we grow in the likeness of Christ. Increasingly we take on his way, his truth, his spirit, his values. We frequently see that in the committed and the loving relationships around us where people make the other person a part of themselves, where they reflect aspects of the other's character that their views or their personality even. And in Christian teaching and theology, 
we in him and he in us is language not to be taken lightly God was in Christ incarnate Christ is in us through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit Holy Communion is the expressing of that intimacy that beautiful intimacy sacramentally and that's one reason why the quantity of both bread and wine we re that we receive at Holy Communion is largely irrelevant. This is spiritual food. It's not physical sustenance. This is about the spirituality of worship. It's not about feeding our physical needs. And we reflected on that to some degree last week. We can be sure that we are not alone in our quest to draw, to draw near to God in this way. We need to feel okay about blending our own understandings of such things with the teachings of the church and to give them meaning for us. The meaning they have for us is important and it's valid. Scholars and thinkers down through the ages have done exactly that. And if we don't give ourselves permission to do that, we can become bogged down in the complexity of the mystery rather than the joy of the mystery. Christ present and available to us is what we celebrate each time we gather together in Eucharist. The sacramental reception of the body and blood of Christ reminds us that when we draw near to God, he draws near to us. And we pray for the time when we can again do that physically, regularly, in community. The Lord be with you. We spend a little time in silence. express our shared faith, our corporate faith, in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Let us pray for the world and for the church. <coughs> the response to the bidding, loving God, broken for us in your mercy, is here our prayer. Dear God, we call to you out of our depths, from the depths that only you know, for we abide in you. We wait for you, Lord, that we might glimpse you in the midst of our lives, in the midst of our confusion, doubts and regrets. Lord, forgive us our hesitancy, the stubbornness of our minds, 
and our hardness of heart. We pray that we might take into ourselves the spiritual bread that you offer and clothe ourselves with the truthfulness and love that flow from you. We pray that we might honour you by imitating your ways as your beloved children with kind and tender hearts. Loving God, broken for us in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear God, we pray for your world. We know that we have taken far too much for granted, that the resources on which we depend are infinite, that the life systems of earth can cope with endless abuse, that poor and dispossessed people will get by. Forgive us our blindness, selfishness and hypocrisy. Today we hold before you the indigenous people of this country, many of whom continue to experience alienation, poverty and poor health. We hold before you polluted oceans, shrinking water tables, threatened bees, frogs and birds, and burning forests. Today we pray for all people who through their work are exposed to heightened risks of the COVID virus. We hold before you workers interacting with the community, including health and transport workers, shop assistants and teachers. As we confront our shared vulnerability through the current pandemic, strengthen us in our desire to encourage and support others in their vulnerability and need. Loving God, broken for us in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear God, we pray for your church. In these disrupted times, we pray for all who are experiencing dislocated from their church communities and a sustaining experience of worship. We pray for Christian communities in Ethiopia, Iraq, Palestine, Myanmar and Lebanon who are subject to civil strife at this time. In the Anglican cycle of prayer today we pray for the Church of South India, the Diocese of Bendigo, St Paul's Canterbury and for the confirmation service at St Philip's Collingwood with Bishop Geneve Blackwell. We also pray for Reverend Joby John and his family. Loving God, broken for us, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear God, we pray for this community, for those worshipping here, their families and the wider community. We pray for all who are lonely or are struggling for one reason or another. Encourage us to reach out, to seek or to offer companionship and help. We hold before you individuals known to us who need your comfort, mercy and hope. Today we pray for those who have asked for our prayers. Marion and family, Mick, Dee, Bethany and family, John, Darren, Jasmine, Dawn, Jean, Keith, Bev, Anna, Joshua, Charmian, Greg, Chrissy, James, Richard, Vernie, Bruce and Belinda. As your people gather to your spirit, we pause to name and hold before you other people who need your comfort, mercy and hope. Loving God, broken for us in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear God, we give thanks that you have gone before us unto death to prepare a place in heaven for all who would love you. We give you thanks for prophets and apostles, for martyrs and evangelists, for the faithful people of this parish that have gone before us. Remember those from this parish whose anniversaries of death occur this week. Stanley Beaumont, Robert Lawson, Rob Burns, John Sells, George Cockrum, Norman Shankley and Lily Sells. Help us to follow in the footsteps of your saints so that we, like them, at the end of our days may be gathered into your eternal presence. Still our fears, Lord, and enliven our souls. Loving God, broken for us, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith we may, by your grace, receive. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
the peace of Christ be always with you. The Offertory Hymn, Lord Enthroned in Heavenly Splendour, and again we'll sing the first two and the last two verses. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. <coughs> Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All glory and honour be yours always and everywhere, mighty creator, ever living God. We give you thanks and praise for our saviour Jesus Christ, who by the power of your spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. <coughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine, and we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread and when he'd given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. <coughs> Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. And looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup, his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit, unite us in the body of your Son, and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. As this broken bread was once many grains which have been gathered together and made one bread, so may your church be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom.
Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, may we who have received this sacrament of your Son's body and blood worship you in all we do, proclaim your word to all the world, and live in the power of your Spirit. Most loving God, you send us out into the world you love. Give us grace to go thankfully and with courage in the power of your Spirit. Amen. much by way of notices, uh, except to say that um, you'll be aware that the working bee uh, had to be cancelled uh, yesterday. Um, so a new date has been set, uh, and fingers crossed, um, Saturday the 22nd of August. Uh, all things are unpredictable, as you realise at the present, but please uh, make that, uh, keep that new date in your diaries if you would. Uh, Saturday the 22nd, and we'll see how things work out. Um, I also wanted to mention, uh, although he's not here, John McKenzie uh, was here earlier this morning helping to, to set up in, in many ways, and um, had he been here serving, uh, it would have been 60 years since John was first a server at the altar. So uh, that was on the, the Feast of the Transfiguration, I believe, the 6th of August. Um, so, John, congratulations on, uh, on a wonderful uh, period of service uh, at the altar of God and uh, of caring for the sacraments. And we know that Jenny's very much part of all that with you now. But, um, yes, well done on, on a, a long and faithful service. And may it continue uh, for a long time yet. Uh, just a final thank you to those who set up all the equipment uh, today. It's, um, it's a difficult task uh, and great that we have people who know what they're doing to get these things to work. So uh, thank, thank you very much. Our final hymn today is Praise and Thanksgiving, Father, we offer for all living things. And uh, there are four verses of that. We're going to sing all the verses.
peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.